Here is the life cycle of the tent caterpillar. The caterpillar starts by spinning these long web strands of silk. And then once these are done, then the caterpillar spins a, a smaller section in here. And then it starts to spin an outer shell that you can see in here that's uh, rounded. And then inside that rounded shell, it spins the, the cocoon itself down in the middle there. So this one's not finished yet. When this is finished, it'll look more yellow because they coat the entire inside with some kind of powder. So here's a look at a completed cocoon. And you can see there's, there's some kind of powder in there, some kind of uh, yellow powder inside. The caterpillars prefer a corner or a small space to spin their cocoons. Like this is an upside down lawn chair and you can see there's a right angled corner here. If they can't find a, a corner then sometimes they'll take a leaf and start spinning on the underside of the leaf and then as the leaf grows it curls around them. In this little cluster of leaves there's about 30 cocoons. This cocoon is empty because the moth has already hatched out of it. So I'll pull it apart a little bit. And there, there is the hole that the moth came out of. And inside is some kind of a shell um, that gets left behind. After the moths emerge from the cocoons, they sleep during the day and lay their eggs at night. So here are the clusters of eggs that the moths lay on the tree branches. You can see that the diameter that they choose is the width of a pencil or slightly smaller. And each one of these deposits contains two or three hundred small eggs that will emerge next spring as caterpillars. There's nine egg sacs on this six inch piece of branch. So here you can see in the springtime the baby caterpillars are starting to come out of the egg sac. You can see the little holes where they've removed the covering and they're emerging out. It's April 15 and they've hatched out of their little egg sac and their tendency is to crawl upward so they've crawled up about two feet and they're clustered on the underside of this leaf. And I'll put the pencil here for a size reference so you can see just how tiny they are. So there's three or four hundred clustered in this little tiny area right here. Okay, it's uh, it's near the end of April now, and as you can see, I'll put this pencil in here again. You can see that these guys are about three times larger than they were uh, about ten days ago. They're literally three or four inches apart. So the clusters are getting larger now as the smaller tents join together to make larger ones. And the caterpillars are growing a little bit too. They're a little bit bigger now than they were before.
There's literally thousands of them on every branch and they're eating every possible thing before they move on to the next branch. So it's near the end of May now and after they completely devour one tree they start to move out of it in search of more food. It looks like moss, but it's caterpillars, thousands of caterpillars moving down the trees. Even the smallest little tree has thousands of caterpillars crawling down towards the ground. And once they reach the ground, they spread out and eat everything in their path that they find appetizing. Shapes in nature are much more easy to navigate. Once they get onto man-made objects, they have a very difficult time finding their way off again. I've actually timed these guys now that they're bigger and they can crawl a meter in 18 seconds. Look at this doormat. We have to keep these doors closed at all times or else they get inside and then they really get annoying once they get inside. They're crawling up and down every blade of grass in their search for food. Here's a healthy Gunnera plant before the caterpillars leave the trees in search of more food. And here is an aftershot of the gunnera. Just basically turned into sticks. And as you can see now, they're starting to make their cocoons by the thousands. This is full of cocoons. There's probably 15 or 20 cocoons inside here. There's probably 3,000 cocoons under the insulators that are on these fence rails. Well, that's it. That's my one year observation of the tent caterpillar life cycle. From cocoon through right back to cocoon again.